Hello, this is Steve from SDR Play. In today's video, we're going to look at making a pan adapter using the SDR Play RSP in conjunction with the ICOM IC7300. First up, I guess we should answer the question, why would we want to do this? And then assuming we want to go ahead, the first thing we'll look at is how we make our RF signal connections and I'm going to look at uh, two different options today and then finally we'll show how to do the software setup. So why did we want to make a pan adapter? After all the 7300's already got a band scope uh, built in so why would I want to complicate things by adding an RSP? Well the answer to that is several. Firstly the uh, built-in band scope is somewhat small and if you've got aging eyes like mine it's somewhat difficult to see and operate whereas if you add an RSP to the mix you can have an arbitrarily large display of both the RF spectrum and the waterfall on your PC monitor. Also the RSP will let you add some additional capabilities one of which is to monitor multiple bands simultaneously and that's uh, kind of a neat feature because while you're working one band you can keep an eye on the other bands to see if conditions are improving. And then thirdly you can simultaneously view the spectrum or waterfall display on your PC and pull up the multifunction meter that's built into the 7300 itself. So that makes it a little bit easier to look at several different things at the same time. And then finally by using an RSP you can use multiple VRXs and you can send the output from each one into uh, individual third-party software decoders for decoding the various digital modes that are in use. So there's a few reasons right there. Uh, some of you I think would probably like to do it just because it's a cool thing to do. But uh, I'd also like to mention that these additional features apply broadly to other makes and models of transceivers that have built-in band scopes. And although some of those other receivers do have the ability to drive a monitor directly, none of them have the ability to add the additional capabilities that you can acquire by using an RSP. So first up, let's look at the RF signal connections. One way to do it is to use an external TR switch. And as you've probably seen, we've covered this several times before, using the MFJ1708B-SDR as our external switch. And what we're doing there is we're taking the antenna input into the switch and then we're feeding the output, the transceiver output from the switch into the antenna input on the 7300. At the same time, we're taking the SDR receiver output and feeding that to our RSP. So effectively what we're doing is we're sharing the signal between the ICOM 7300 and the RSP. Now I also want to point out the control signal shown here there is a send jack on the back of the 7300 that can be connected directly to the control input on the TR switch and the function of that is that when you key the mic to transmit it will isolate the RSP from the antenna and the transceiver and avoid overloading and potentially damaging the RSP. We always recommend using this hardwired control signal because although the uh, TR switch itself has got built-in RF sensing, we regard that as more of an insurance measure than the primary way of protecting the RSP when you transmit. Second, I want to look at something that's unique for the 7300. I was up at the local HRO store in Plano the other week and I enlisted the services of Steve Gilmore to help me install a neat little gadget that they carry. It's called the RX7300 SMA and as you can see in the upper right it's a, a little board uh, with a couple of uh, connectors and, and a ferrite core and the function of that is to tap into uh, an internal signal line within the 7300 and then loop it out the back and then back in again. Uh, alternatively we can take that output and use that to feed an external device such as an RSP and what that achieves for us is to have a protected output to the RSP so that we don't have to worry about overloading it when we're transmitting. 
So once we've added this little board inside the 7300, all we need to do is take the output side of that and feed it to the RSP. And then by using either a simple T adapter, which seems to work surprisingly well, or a, a probably a better impedance match splitter, we feed that back to the input side and that allows us to continue to listen to uh, received audio on the 7300 as well as on the PC. As you can see, it's a very simple, clean installation and uh, that may be something you want to consider if you have a 7300. The only downside to this is the, uh, the, the, the new uh, addition to the 7300 goes in the slot that was formerly occupied by the antenna tuner connector which uh, you just have to remove and uh, safely tug away inside the receiver. So what about software? Well there's basically three parts to this. The first part is we need the IC7300 hardware drivers installed on our PC. Secondly we need OmniRig which is a universal traffic cop if you will that goes between the SDR software and almost any rig that has cat control. And then thirdly, the SDR software itself. We will talk about SDR Uno, but the same technique can be applied with other alternative uh, SDR software out there. For example, HD SDR or SDR console or Cubic SDR. First up, let's look at the drivers. And the situation you're in will probably fit into one of the following three categories. Uh, you may already have them installed. If you've ever plugged your 7300 into a PC, you were probably prompted to install drivers uh, either from a Windows Update or by downloading them from uh, ICOM themselves or from Silicon Labs. If you haven't plugged it in before, then it's most likely when you plug it in, you'll be given prompts to follow to install it anyway. So once that is done, if you open up Device Manager under the Ports section, you will see something similar to what you see here, the Silicon Labs CP210X USB to UART bridge. And the key thing here is to note the COM port that's being used. In this case, it's shown as COM4. Now we move on to installing OmniRig. If you don't already have it downloaded, you can see the URL on the uh, on the uh, screen right there. And once you open up OmniRig, I'll assume we're using just Rig 1. You can actually control two rigs uh, via OmniRig. So you select the rig type to be the IC7300. The port will be the COM port that we saw in Device Manager. So that will be COM port 4. We selected uh, 19.2 as the board rate, which I believe is the default board rate that you can see within the menus on the 7300 itself. I'm told that's the most reliable setting to use, although in most transceivers there's quite a degree of flexibility in picking the board rate. As for the rest of the settings, normally uh, as they come out of the box, it will work just fine. So that's all you have to do on OmniRig. Now let's set up SDR Uno, and there are three things we need to do. We need to go in the main window and open up the settings and then move across to the O-Rig tab. And when we do that, we should see that it shows Rig 1 type, IC7300. And if OmniRig was set up correctly, it should show Rig 1 status as being online. The Rig 1 used by uh, field will be populated after we've completed the uh, all three steps on this page. And then also notice at the bottom of that main settings window, it says connected to OmniRig server. And that is an indication that SDR Uno is successfully talking to OmniRig. Now, if we now go to the uh, VRX, the RX control window in SDR Uno, again, we open up the settings window, move across to the OrIG tab. Now, please note that you want to do all your work here on the OrIG tab. Do not do anything on the tab labeled CAT. That is used only when you're using other third-party software to control SDR Uno. We want to control a rig, so we go to the O-Rig tab. And the normal settings are sync VRX to the rig, sync the rig to the VRX. That gives us a bi-directional control back and forth between the rig and the software. And then finally check the sync RX mode box. And what that means is when you change from say upper sideband to lower sideband, 
or to uh, straightforward AM, those mode changes will be reflected across OmniRig between the software SDR Uno and the rig itself. And then finally, in the RX control window, you will see a button near the top labeled RSYN1 for RigSync1, uh, unless you happen to have chosen to set everything up on Rig2. Make sure that button is selected. You can see it's highlighted in orange there. And once that's done, back up in the main settings window, you'll notice that it now says Rig1 used by Instant0 VRX0. And basically those are all the software settings you need to do. So now you're completely at liberty to go ahead and play. Once you've got everything up and running, you can tune by clicking on the frequency within SDR Uno and the rig will follow suit. Uh, alternatively, you can tune on the rig itself using the tuning knob and you'll see that SDR Uno will follow the tuned frequency. As you make mode changes, they will be reflected back and forth also. The only thing I would like to note here is if you use the band select switches in SDR Uno that appear on the numeric keypad in RX Control, let's say you select 20 meters, what that will do is that will also turn on the LO lock function in SDR Uno, and that is to ensure that you it prevents you from tuning outside the band. What this also means though is if you now go back to the rig itself and try and change to a different band, SDR Uno will not follow because the local oscillator has been locked within the band you initially set. So for that reason we recommend that you either do all the band switching changes from within SDR Uno, or if you want to change bands on the 7300, you must first go into SDR Uno and deselect the LO lock button in the main window. Now, now we're on upper side band on here as well. So we're syncing mode back and forth and we're syncing frequency back and forth. End of story. It's magic. It is magic. And that's about it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thank you for watching. And if you require further information, please visit our website at www.sdrplay.com. 73. I don't know, Steve. I've done this a few times, but it always seems like magic. <laughs>